so hi everyone, it's a great uh, pleasure for me to be here tonight. Um, as, uh, as I was introduced, my name is Shoshana Kessak and I am an American LARP designer and I am really excited tonight to talk to you about a topic that's very near and dear to my heart, uh, which is uh, disability, uh, access, LARP, and you. Um, I've had particular insight into this uh, issue considering my own journey as a LARPer and game organizer. Uh, you get to see some wonderful pictures of me as a wee babby as a LARPer. Um, but uh, I've been LARPing for about 12 years now, and uh, in that time I've had a uh, sort of a journey going from being uh, what you would consider a able-bodied LARPer who had invisible disabilities uh, uh, to somebody who has transitioned into being uh, uh, using a wheelchair uh, when going uh, to games. Uh, so I've had a really, uh, the entire uh, experience of a 12-year journey uh, that has given me a lot of insight into what it is to go to LARPs, uh, with uh, a physical disability and what it is to interact with LARPs and with game design, uh, the game designs in general in, within the LARP systems. Um, uh, LARP is a game medium and as an art form, whatever we want to classify it as, I don't want to get into that fight, uh, can be difficult for those who are disabled. Uh, it, it uses the physical body as our medium and as our avatar to interact with game states. Um, and uh, what, what happens uh, to a person when the physical body, when the senses that you're interacting with, uh, the gameplay uh, area, uh, or the physical capabilities that you have are not what people would consider the norm. Uh, what happens when the five senses are different or when the physical body is different? Um, these fundamental differences uh, uh, as players' capabilities can provide an obstacle that not only can uh, limit what a person can do within a LARP, but can actually gatekeep players away from a LARP altogether. Um, and while disability accommodation laws are being fought for in, out, out in the, the real world, I suppose we call it, uh, the world over, uh, within LARPs there's still a major uh, a demographic uh, that does not necessarily get the attention that it needs. Um, so lots of games are being written today uh, by LARP designers uh, that are, are looking at progressive ideas and of inclusion, of, uh, of how to be uh, more inclusive to people of different races, of different genders, of different sexualities. However, when, when approaching, uh, looking at inclusivity, um, it seems oftentimes uh, disability access seems to get left behind uh, in the face of the needs of LARP design. Um, and so I'm, I'm proposing here that without consideration for those who are disabled when planning, designing, and implementing LARPs, uh, it doesn't matter if a game considers itself or a community considers itself inclusive. Without actually including people who are disabled, we have failed as LARP designers to actually be inclusive. Um, so how do we address this issue, right? It's easy to recognize a problem, but how do we actually look at addressing it? Well, the idea is then to look at how we are designing our LARPs from the bottom up. Look at it very much from the fundamentals at, um, as we start our designs. Um, and so accessibility needs to be considered as a factor, not only later on when accommodations need to be made, but as LARPs are being created. Um, and so it involves a method of LARP creation that I have started to call, um, uh, sorry, considerate design. Uh, I believe that's next, there we go. Uh, considerate design is a method of creation that takes into account individual players' needs during the early stages of design with thought given to not only access uh, by individuals of different types, but with allowances in the design for adjustment later on during implementation. Uh, considerate design posits that by designing with accessibility in mind, not only can designers make LARPs, LARPs that serve a broader audience, um, but uh, it also allows for new and interesting stories to be told within those LARPs because we're including new and uh, different voices that otherwise would have been gatekept out of the community. Um, it actually also allows LARP designers to not have to do double duty later on by needing to make accommodations later and sort of bend their rules in the system that they've already created. By doing it in the beginning, we no longer have to sort of go back and retread the ground that we've already done. Um, considerate design can also be used to look at different communities that need attention, different um, minority groups are, and that need to be included more in LARP, but in this particular case we're looking at disability design, and I believe there's four cornerstones that we can look at um, that we can uh, consider when talking about integrating disability into our LARPs. Uh, so the first one would be the role of the disabled in the game's world building and narrative structure. The second being the question of how disabled and abled characters will be played, by whom, and how are they portrayed in the game. 
uh, the physical design of the game space, which is a, a huge uh, question, and its availability for access or disability accommodation, and the consideration of the equal treatment of those who are disabled out of character within the game community. Um, so we'll take these one at a time very quickly. Um, the first of the role is the role of dis the disabled person or persons within uh, the game's world and story. Um, in LARPs, very much like in media, um, the, the, there are many tropes that disabled characters can fall into, such as the weak or incapable person. Um, oftentimes, those characters are relegated to side roles or um, represented in very poor and stereotypical fashion. Um, a lot of times uh, in LARPs, what we will see is uh, people fall back on the question of genre to make excuses as to why disabled characters uh, should be given a, a secondary status, uh, such as looking at historical games or in uh, post-apocalyptic or, or you know, dangerous settings. Um, when played down in a LARP, uh, should disabled players be restricted from certain roles, either by the setup of the narrative or by casting, which often happens in many games, uh, it signals to uh, not only to uh, the other players on how to treat the these characters, but also out of character, that how uh, people with disabilities should be looked at and treated. We learn from our narratives, and these narratives then teach us that the people who are in these LARPs are lesser. Um, uh, this removes the agency from the players, as well as from the, uh, the characters that they are portraying, um, to create their own narratives and to be equal to their peers. Disabled characters must be visible, capable of fully interacting with the game, and um, able to be as vital, vibrant, and involved as their able-bodied peers to achieve a measure of equality. The second design challenge comes when considering just who will play disabled characters also, and how they will be portrayed. As I mentioned previously, it's important to have disabled characters be visible and involved, uh, yet how those characters are played by and by whom are just as important. Uh, disabled players should be and must be allowed to play characters that do not share their disability, uh, regardless of whether or not it harms somebody's immersion or not. Uh, as I like to say, if I can imagine an IT specialist as a centuries-old vampire, you can ignore my wheelchair for an hour. Um, it's equally important that an able-bodied player uh, be able to play uh, uh, disabled characters as well, in my opinion, but that they must do so with respect and not simply as a stereotype uh, or uh, uh, being played for mechanical purposes that gives advantages to their character. Um, game systems that reward players for taking on disabilities with incentives like points towards additional powers can be problematic as they uh, can lead to, par to players tacking on these disabilities without truly understanding what they're doing or uh, accepting the responsibility of playing these things respectfully. <clears throat> Excuse me. Additionally, games that use mental illness, for example, as a punitive measure against characters um, can often lead to players m misrepresenting mental illnesses that they do not tru uh, truly understand uh, during their play. Um, it's important for the disabled who are often misrepresented in the media as charity cases, weaklings, unstable, or burdens to society to be represented earnestly and equally in games. Not only uh, will disabled players themselves then feel more uh, comfortable in this space, uh, in a space that doesn't trivialize them, uh, but it will allow able-bodied uh, players uh, to fully uh, integrate disabled stories into their games as more than just a stereotype or a joke. Uh, the third issue is perhaps the largest of all and one of the hardest to tackle, and that's the physical design of game spaces. Everybody knows that the biggest pet peeve of LARP designers is to find a great space for your game, uh, from castles to battleships to um, you know, mental, uh, mental asylums. Um, these locations can make or break a game and really set the mood, um, yet when choosing a location, it is imperative to consider whether or not uh, that space will be accessible to your disabled players. A game can be open to the disabled uh, conceptually and in your design, but it's, uh, it's entirely uh, different if a player literally cannot go through the door or go up a flight of stairs. Uh, this is a difficult challenge because, frankly, lots of non-accessible venues are really cool. Um, but do those, uh, does that fact, does the fact that it's really cool um, make up for the fact that your disabled players will be gatekept out of your community because of it? Additional physical questions include also what players will be required to do during the games. What are the verbs that your game actually does? So is a character required to run, jump, climb, uh, explore, uh, or walk across Arctic Tundra? 
Um, either way, any of those things can actually keep those who have physical disabilities outside. Um, also, those who have chronic illnesses or mental uh, illnesses as well can be gatekept without um, accommodations being made or being capable of being made for them. Um, the last of the four considerations, the equal treatment of the disabled within the LARP community, ties into the concerns and considerations designers put into making such accommodations during their design. Disabled people face a great deal of discrimination in society where they're often viewed, as I've said, as lesser than their peers. In some places, they're barred from inclusion uh, into simple activities that most people take for granted. It's not only the responsibility of organizers within the LARP community to consider whether or not the disabled are being treated equally in their community, uh, but whether or not they've done their due diligence to make sure that they are welcoming not only in gestures, but in the treatment of, 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 that will make them equal to their able-bodied counterparts. Organizers must communicate with their differently abled players, believe them when they ask for health accommodations, and establish a dialogue over what special needs they may have over the course of an experience. Now, to many, it seems like this is a great deal of work uh, to adjust a LAR like your LARP and your LARP creation process. In many conversations I've had about disability and LARPs, people simply shrug and say, well, not every game is for everyone. They point to players who've self-selected out of games due to content or just simply distaste for whatever game is happening. And they say that you know, a player can go and look someplace else for their experience. Uh, therefore, the argument goes, if the game is not accessible and no accommodations can be made, the player can just go elsewhere. Um, th this, these disabled LARPers are equal, of course, to their counterparts, but they should just play in a different game. This elsewhere argument is a false dichotomy. Uh, where able-bodied players can choose what games they can play based on their tastes, they are given that choice while disabled LARPers are offered none. It, if a game does not make accommodations, they cannot simply choose to play and stay and interact anyway, but instead they must not play because they cannot. This isn't opting out as the able-bodied player has done, but rather they have been blocked from attending and therefore we have fallen into gatekeeping. This kind of gatekeeping exists the world over in our society, and it, it has required our civilization to create uh, laws like the Americans with Disabilities Act so that disabled people can interact fully with our society. So yet we in LARP don't have a Disabilities Act for LARP, but maybe it's time that we did. By stating that a disabled LARPer can just go somewhere else, a designer is perpetuating the idea. I've just forgotten about my slides altogether, haven't I? There they go, okay, fine. Um, by stating that a dis uh, disabled LARPer can just go somewhere else, a designer is perpetuating the idea that LARP is an able-bodied person's game, and that disabled LARPers can be relegated to second-class status, left out by virtue of their need for accommodation, and then indeed, these accommodations are often treated as a difficulty, a stress, or a burden. LARPers with disabilities are not a burden. They are part of our community. They are us, and they are as vital as any other voice. And it's important that as we go forward into designing our games in the future, we start making the games accessible from the ground up. Only by developing new tools and new ways of looking at our LARP design will we find a way to tell the stories of our disabled LARPers and manage to make better games for our future. Thank you very much. <laughs>